Welcome back to The Legal Brief, the show where we crush the various legal myths and misinformation surrounding various areas of the gun world. I'm your host, Adam Kraut, and today we're talking about AR pistols. RE Factor Tactical now offers some of the most useful targets around. Whether it's the IQ, the kill zone, or the essentials target, you won't be short on drills to run at the range. To get 10% off your entire order, click the RE Factor link in the description and use the code TGC10. A number of you have been asking for a video on AR pistols, so here it is. AR pistols are nothing more than a pistol built on an AR-15 receiver. So what makes an AR pistol a pistol instead of a short barrel rifle? If you did not see the episode on SBRs, be sure to check out the Legal Brief playlist on YouTube because there's a ton of information that you may have missed that will help you understand this. As always, we need to start with the definitions. The Gun Control Act, or GCA, defines the term handgun in the pertinent part as a firearm which has a short stock and is designed to be held and fired by the use of a single hand. So we see that a handgun is designed to be held and fired by the use of one hand. Simple enough. The term rifle is defined in the pertinent part as designed or redesigned, made or remade, and intended to be fired from the shoulder. The definition goes on to include that it was designed or redesigned, made or remade, to use the energy of an explosive to fire only a single projectile through a rifled bore for each single pull of the trigger. So we see that a rifle is intended to be fired from the shoulder. Interestingly enough, neither the GCA nor the NFA defines the term pistol, but their regulations do. The regulations define the term pistol as a weapon originally designed, made, and intended to fire a projectile from one or more barrels when held in one hand, and having A, a chamber as an integral part of or permanently aligned with the bores, B, a short stock designed to be gripped by one hand and at an angle to and extending below the line of the bore. The definition for a handgun and rifle mirrors that of the law itself. The term pistol and the term handgun are two separate things. I know, makes a lot of sense. So, we can see that both rifles and pistols are designed to fire a single projectile. We can also see that pistols can even have a short stock, like this mare's leg. So what is the key point in this? A handgun is designed to be fired by the use of a single hand, and a rifle is intended to be fired from the shoulder. Which brings us back to the question of what makes an AR pistol a pistol rather than a short barrel rifle. As we reviewed in the episode on short barrel rifles, a short barrel rifle has three important characteristics. It is one, a rifle, two, it has a barrel length of less than 16 inches, or three, it has an overall length of less than 26 inches. If the firearm itself is not a rifle, the barrel length and overall length are inconsequential as to whether or not it's an SBR because the base firearm is not a rifle. However, that doesn't mean we're quite out of the woods yet. It is possible, depending upon the configuration, for you to build something called an Any Other Weapon, or AOW, which I covered last week. If you didn't see that episode, it's another one you're going to want to go brush up on. The key language in the AOW definition for this discussion is found at the end, which states in the pertinent part, such term shall not include a pistol or revolver having a rifled bore. Looking at the definition of a pistol, which is found in the regulations of the NFA as well as the GCA, and we see that those terms, as we reviewed earlier, are identical. So why does this matter? If you add a vertical foregrip to your AR pistol and the overall length of it is less than 26 inches, you've now made an AOW. Why? Because a pistol is designed to be fired from one hand. Dodge this. ATF has long held the position that when you install a vertical foregrip on a pistol, you have now made a firearm as defined by the NFA, which is not the same as a pistol. As a result, it is subject to the control of the NFA and requires registration. ATF has also held that angled foregrips like the B5 Grip Stop and Magpul AFG are not vertical foregrips, so adding one does not change your pistol into an AOW. But Adam, what about the SIG Brace Shockwave Blade Stabilizer or that Thordson Customs Enhanced Buffer Tube cover? Long story short, go watch the video I did on the SIG Brace. I don't want this to be a 25 minute long video and neither do you. We've covered a lot of overlapping topics, so go watch other videos. For those of you building AR pistols, here's a quick few points that you may find useful. First, it doesn't matter what the receiver you're building the gun on is marked. I see a lot of questions or comments from people as to whether the receiver has to be marked pistol in order to build a pistol. The answer is no. As long as you start with a virgin receiver, you can build it into either a pistol or a rifle. If the receiver was already used to build a rifle, you cannot build it into a pistol. Along that same vein, however, you can build a pistol, make it into a rifle, and then revert it back to a pistol. ATF ruling 2011-4 is instructive on the matter, and I've included a link to that in the description. If you had purchased 
purchased a receiver that had a rifle buttstock on it, but it was never attached to an upper receiver, you may remove that buttstock, attach a pistol buffer tube to the receiver, and then build the receiver into a pistol. ATF has stated that a receiver with a buttstock is not a rifle under the law, and as such can be built into whichever configuration you wish. I've included a link to that letter in the description as well. Hopefully that gives you a better understanding as to what an AR pistol is and why it's not an SBR. If you guys like this episode, you know what to do. Hit that like button and share it around with your friends. Have a question you want answered on the show? Head on over to the legal brief section on theguncollective.com. Be sure to check out my website, adamkraut.com, for more information on my quest to serve you on the NRA Board of Directors. And don't forget to like The Gun Collective on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Full30, Snapchat, and wherever else you can catch us on social media. And as always, thanks for watching. The shirts worn in today's episode of The Legal Brief have been provided by Patriot Patch. Click the link in the description to learn more.